Chapter 5, Z-Scores, Location of Scores in Standardized Distributions, Part 3. Standardizing a Distribution. Every X value can be transformed into a Z-score. The Z-score is referred to as a standardized value. Characteristics of Z-score transformation include the same shape of original distribution. So when we convert an X value, when we use our equation z is equal to x minus mu divided by standard deviation, the shape of the original distribution does not change. Essentially, all we're doing is taking this x value and convert it into a z value, and you can think of it as relabeling. So we're just giving that original x value a new name. So its location is um, not changed in relation to the mean, and this, therefore the shape of the distribution is not going to change. The shape is determined by the x values on the abscissa and the frequency on the ordinate. The mean of a z-score distribution is always equal to zero, as I mentioned in a previous lecture. In this lecture, I will um, show you through uh, the equations of how that is true. So. We can just um, accept that, but in this particular video, I will show you mathematically how that is true. The standard deviation is always equal to 1. A Z distribution is called a standardized distribution. So essentially, um, the purpose of Z scores is to enable us to compare things that are different. As I mentioned before in another lecture, we can think of it as finding the common denominator. When we're working with fractions, that's um, a process we have to engage in so that we can um, make fair comparisons. This is similar. So if we have two different distributions with their own distinct means and standard deviations and we want to compare them, we're going to need to place them on a third distribution, a common distribution where they all have values expressed in the same unit so that we can make comparisons. Figure 5.4 can be found on page 131 of our text, and it's an illustration of the type of question that you may be posed with. So here we're, we're looking at a distribution where um, the original mean is unknown, so we're not sure what the mean is equal to, and we are not um, given what the standard deviation is as well. But we are given some other information. We're given some x values, their corresponding z values. And with that information, we will be able to figure out what the mean of this distribution is in addition to the standard deviation. So um, first, let's take note of what was given. We were told, um, or we are told, that a score x equal to 54 is the same as is equal to two standard deviations above the mean. And then an x value equal to 42 is equal to one standard deviation below the mean. So again, and that's coming from here. It says that 42 is equal to one standard deviation unit below. It's negative, and this is two standard deviation units above. And then we're told that the distance in raw score points from 42 to 54 is equal to 12 points. Um, so that's going to be important. And then the other bit of information that's important is um, to determine how many standard deviation units are equal to 12 points. So to do that, we can see that from here to here is one standard deviation, two, and three standard deviation units. So in other words, 12 raw points is equivalent to three standard deviation units. And with that information, we can figure out what the standard deviation of this distribution is equal to, because what we're trying to do, or what we are going to do, is convert the raw score point difference and divide it by the standard deviation units to figure out what one standard deviation unit is equal to. So you can think of an equation as um, raw, so the standard deviation, in this case, we can figure out by saying that uh, taking the raw score point difference and dividing by standard deviation unit distance between these two scores. 
So the standard deviation could be calculated by taking 12, right? And again, we have three standard deviation units between them, which is equivalent to 12 raw score points. So we divide by 3. So 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. So one standard deviation unit is equal to 4 points. And then what we can do is use that to confirm if, if this is true and to figure out what the mean is. So if we are indicating that one standard deviation unit is equal to 4 points, then if we move from, let's say, the score of 42, so if we consider the score of 42, and since it's to the left and below the mean, and one standard deviation is equal to 4 points, let's add 4 points to figure out what the mean is. So 42 plus 4 gives us 46, so we would say that 40, the mean is equal to 42 plus 4, and that gives us 46. So this would then be 46 in the middle, and then we can confirm that by adding 4 more points. So another standard deviation unit up would put us at 46 plus 4, 50. And if we went one more standard deviation unit, then 50 plus 4 would put us at 54. So this is a good way to reconcile our answer given the raw score point difference divided by the standard deviation unit distance between these two scores to calculate our standard deviation. And then we would use that information to figure out what the mean is of the distribution and then work backwards and see if all of these numbers make sense given the distance between each score and the span between the two original scores um, to make sure that this answer that we would come up with, so now we've determined that the mean of this distribution is equal to 46 and the standard deviation is equal to 4 points. So you'll see quite a bit of um, questions like this in your homework and it doesn't follow the, the basic structure of the equation that we're using for a z-score. Um, we really have to think about what we're, what we're working with. It's distance between values and if we're working with raw score points and we want to compute the standard deviation, we just have to divide it by the um, distance between scores expressed in standard deviation units or z-scores. So um, use this as a model for some of your homework questions and also the um, videos I posted for the demonstrations will be helpful as well. Figure 5.5, so again, going back to the characteristics of a, a standardized distribution or converting raw scores into z-scores, we understand the shape of the distribution does not change. So here we have the original population distribution of scores in their x values, and we are told that the mean is equal to 100 and standard deviation is equal to 10. And we're converting that distribution into a distribution of z-scores. So let's just con consider this score here, the mean. So if we convert that into a z-score, 100, right, the score is equal to 100, minus the mean, which is 100, divided by our standard deviation, standard deviation. So we get 100 minus 100 is 0, divided by 10, and we get a 0. So that's one way right, to think of this idea that the new distribution of z-scores, the mean will always equal 0, and the standard deviation will always equal 1. But I'm also going to show you a slide in a process of, of actually calculating this um, to show you that regardless of the distribution, the mean will always equal 0 and the standard deviation will always equal 1. So again, the um, distribution, the shape of the distribution does not change. So if we were originally working with a negatively skewed or positively skewed distribution, the distribution in z-scores would also be negatively or positively skewed. Here we have a normal distribution with, with zero skew, two tails, um, and we have equal distribution above the mean and below the mean. The mean, median, mode are all equal to one another, so it's a symmetrical distribution. So the shape, once we create z-scores, is, is unchanged. So again, we say that one standard deviation is equal to 10 points in this example. And if we were to convert the next score of 110, we know that 110, so 110 minus 100 divided by 10, so 
10 over 10 is equal to 1, right? So now we've converted this score to a z-score of 1, which makes sense. And so again, this line, uh, the purpose of this slide is simply to show you that the location of these scores is unchanged. Um, that here, these 10 points are in relation to the raw score points, and here it's in relation to standard deviation units. So one standard deviation unit is equivalent to 10 raw, raw score points. So again, the shape of the distribution is unchanged. The mean of the distribution of z-scores will always equal 0, and the standard deviation will always equal 1. So instead of showing the two distrib distributions separate from one another as the last slide did, here is a better illustration of what you'll see, and, and hopefully this makes more sense. So the original distribution, again, had a mean equal to 100 and a standard deviation equal to 10. And um, instead of putting them side by side, what you'll see is underneath, we'll start to relabel the distribution and create a Z distribution. So again, we, we see that the score, raw score of 100 is equivalent to a z-score of 0. A raw score of 110 is equal to a z-score of 1. So notice again that the location of these scores is unchanged. They're right underneath when we're, we're demonstrating the z-distribution in relation to the raw score distribution. So this helps affirm this idea that the, the distribution shape is unchanged. You can consider z-score as just a re process of relabeling. So you can think of it as the score of one, you know, the score of of 120, right, is now known as a positive two, and um, z score of negative one represents an original raw score of 90. So it's just a new name, um, and again, it doesn't change the location. It's just expressing the location in relation to the mean in standard deviation units. How far is a score of 120? from the mean of 100 expressed in standard deviation units. In this case, we would say it's two standard deviation units from the mean. And this is important because, um, again, as I mentioned in previous videos, when we want to compare something, especially the effects of manipulating the independent variable, if we have a change in the distribution, you know, is the change falling within the common region that we refer to as here in the center, or is it out in the extremes, um, tails of a distribution? And what I mean by that is, let's again take consideration this first distribution, um, and let's just say that these scores represent um, IQ scores of males. And we have a distribution, uh, if we're wanting, wanting to compare the difference of IQ of males to females to see if there's a difference, and we plot on top our distribution of female IQs, and it looks something like this. And let's say their average score is 105, and let's say their standard deviation is equal to 10 points as well. So if we go up one standard deviation unit, that puts us at 115. So notice that um, if we were to have, to, if we had to make a, a draw a conclusion or determine if the IQ scores of females is significantly different than males, yes, the means are slightly different. But if we plot it one on top of the other, we see that the score of 105, which is the average of the female um, IQ scores is falling in the common region of the original distribution. So even though the distributions are different, it's not different enough for us to conclude that the female IQ scores are different um, due to gender. We would conclude that the difference in uh, IQ scores is, is simply due to um, sampling error, the natural discrepancy between um, uh, scores and, and um, that we're comparing. So. It's just by chance that we've had um, uh, collected information from the female population and it illustrated an average of 105 different from the males, but not significantly different. Now, a different scenario may be as follows. Let's say that the female population, so again, the male population um, IQ score is 100 with the standard deviation equal to 10. And let's say we um, collected data on females and their average was over here. So the average population 
was equal to 115. And let's still say that the standard deviation is equal to 10 points. So one standard deviation unit above puts us at 125. And now we can see that it's different. The means are different in 100 versus 115. And in terms of distance from the original mean of 100, we see significant difference. Again, we would have to put this to a statistical test that we'll learn about in subsequent chapters. But at this point, we're thinking, you know what, these populations are, are different from each other because it's much further from the original mean and the standard deviations don't overlap. So this is something that we'll uh, start to think more about as we move further into inferential statistics. But again, hopefully this helps you better understand the process of standardizing a distribution using z-scores. So we're not comparing raw scores, we're comparing standard deviation units. So again, for the um, po female population, if we converted that average score 115 to z-score, we would take 115 minus the male population of 100 and divide by the standard deviation. So we'd get 15 over 10, and we would conclude that that is equal to a z-score of 1.5. Now again, not extremely different. It's one and a half standard deviation units from the original distribution, right? And again, it would be up to a, a statistical test to determine if that's significantly different. Um, is it due to differences in gender, or is it just simply due to chance, sampling error? and we'll learn how to engage in those types of tests to draw those conclusions accurately. But again, here now we get a sense, instead of comparing the means and raw score points, now we're comparing distance expressed in standardized units or standard deviation units. Okay, figure 5.7 will be used to um, demonstrate the equations used to affirm that the mean of a z distribution is equal to zero and the standard deviation of a z distribution is always equal to one. Again, this is applicable to any distribution. Um, so regardless of what the original scores look like, look like, the z distribution will always have a mean of zero and the standard deviation equal to one. So first, we, um, the, we're following along with example 5.7 on page 133. So we're given a set of six scores, a population of six scores of 0, 6, 5, 2, 3, and 2, which I listed here. And we're asked to convert those into z scores. Again, our z equation is x minus the mu divided by standard deviation. We're told that the original distribution has a mean of 3 and a standard deviation equal to 2. That should be a 2, not a 3. And we're going to use those values to convert every score in this distribution to z-score. So the first one, a score of 0. So 0 minus 3 divided by 2 gives us negative 1.5. A score of 6 minus 3 divided by 2 is equal to 1.5. And then we take 5 minus 3 and divide by 2 and we get positive 1. 2 minus 3 divided by 2. So 2 minus 3 divided by 2 gives us negative 0.5. And 3 minus 3 divided by 2 gives us 0. And again, that's the score, um, which is also reflective of the mean, so that should ring a bell. And then 2 minus 3 divided by 2 gives us negative 0.5. So again, what we've done is taken these raw scores and converted them into z-scores. So this distribution B illustrates the same shape um, with a new mean equal to 0, and that was affirmed here, a score of 3 converted to a z-score. The mu is now equal to 0. And um, we see that the location of these scores hasn't changed, and the shape of the distribution is the same as in the original distribution of raw scores. And now, if we want to calculate mathematically um, the mu of the z-distribution, we're going to take the sum of z, over n. So 
we're going to sum up this column here, the sum of my z scores. And you should notice that this is similar to when we looked at the balance point of the mean, right? Equal distance above and below. So these should cancel each other out. Um, and let's see if they do. So negative 1.5 plus 1.5, that cancels each other out. Then we have positive 1. Um, and then negative 0.5, 0, and negative 0.5. So if we consider negative 0.5 and negative 0.5, that's equal to negative 1. And we had positive 1 here. So if we take the sum of these z-scores, we get 0. And then if we want to calculate the mean, we would enter into this equation, 0 divided by 6, and that gives us 0. So now mathematically, we've, we've affirmed that the mean of a z-distribution is equal to 0. The next step would be to um, affirm mathematically that the standard deviation is equal to 1. So let's um, go back to our equations of how to calculate the variance and standard deviation of a population. So to calculate variance, we learned that variance is equal to, if we're using the definitional equation, the sum of our x minus mu divided, um, and then squared. So we take our mean deviation squared and take the summation and divide that by n. And for purposes of being as explicit as possible, let me step one step back in and begin with SS because that's how we learned it. So SS for um, a distribution, the sum of square deviations using the definitional process is the sum of x minus mu squared. But notice that we're talking about a um, distribution of z-scores. So we would consider the same process um, but something important to note that the mean is always equal to zero. So if we relate it to a z distribution, it would be the sum of z minus mu, minus mu, and then squared. So we take those distributions, difference between the z score and mu, and square it and take the summation. But the interesting thing is, is that the mu is equal to zero, right? And so Essentially, what we need to do is simply just square our z values because if we take this first score, um, of first z score of negative 1.5 minus 0, the deviation is still negative 1.5. So, modification would simply say that what we're going to do is take the sum of our z scores squared because again the mean is equal to zero so that's a step that we can bypass and simply take the z value and square it and then take the summation of those z scores that have been squared because the mean is equal to to zero all right so we can do that over here all right and so we would take 1.5 squared and or negative 1.5 squared which is 2.25, so notice the negative is now gone. Um, the next one is also 2.25. 1 squared is 1. Point, negative 0.5 squared is positive 0.25. 0 squared is 0. And then negative 0.5 squared is 0 0.25. Okay, so now if we take the sum the sum of z values that have been squared. If we take the summation there, so add in your calculators 2.25 plus 2.25 plus 1 plus 0.25 plus 0 plus 0.25, and you should get a summation equal to 6. All right, so now we'll, we've calculated the sum of squared deviations. That leads us into the next equation of variance. So our variance um, equation is, our variance is equal to SS over N. We just calculated SS. So again, our SS was equal to 6.0. It was the sum of all scores that have been squared. In this case, they were Z scores, and that was equal to 6. And we have 6 scores, so the standard, excuse me, the variance of this distribution is equal to 1. And now we, we can calculate the standard deviation by simply taking the square root of our variance. So the square root of 1 is equal to 1. 
And so now we see mathematically how we um, can accept this idea that a z distribution will always have a mean equal to zero and a standard deviation equal to one. Again, this is applicable to any distribution that you're working with. So we won't um, be doing these calculations. What I just illustrated here is not something we're going to do in, in a problem. This was simply to affirm that you can accept the, the um, um, concept that the mean of a, a z distribution is equal to zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. So mathematically, here is proof of that. Um, but again, we won't be doing this for distributions. We will just be um, constructing z distributions and recognizing that the standard deviation is always equal to one, regardless of what the original distribution looked like. So again, to review, um, z-scores used for comparison. So all z-scores are comparable to each other. And again, it's because they've been standardized and are all being expressed as standard deviation units from the center. Scores from different distributions can be converted to z-scores and then allowing us for, um, for purposes of comparison. Z-scores allow the direct comparison of scores from two different distributions because they have the same, they have been converted to the same scale. Very important. So again, taking apples and oranges and convert, converting them into pairs. That's what we're doing. We're um, taking two different or more distributions that are very different in terms of their means and standard deviations and placing them on a common distribution so we can make comparisons. So what I'd like to do next is, is walk you through an example of what we're, what we're doing. All right, let's consider this example. Um, let's say we are looking at and analyzing exam one scores for two different instructors. So Professor A's class, the average on this exam was equal to 70 and the standard deviation is equal to 10. In Professor B's class, the average score is 65 and the standard deviation is equal to 5. First of all, we should be able to determine which distribution is more varied or inconsistent. The standard deviation reveals that to us, so we would conclude that Professor B's class, um, the students were more consistent and closer to a score of 65 than in the case of Professor A's class. That distribution is more spread out um, and the scores were less like the mean of 70. All right, and we have two different students. Mary's in Professor A's class, and she scored an 80 on this exam. Esther is in Professor B's class, and she scored a 75 on the exam. And uh, these two students are friends, and they're comparing scores. And I would ask you, which one has bragging rights? Does, did Esther do better, or did Mary do better? So at face value, it appears that Mary did better, and she may say to her friend, well, I... I'm smarter than you, and this is demonstrated my, by my score of an 80, and uh, you just got a 75. And that would be an incorrect comparison because these two distributions are different. They don't have the same mean, nor do they have the same standard deviation. So you can consider them as apples and oranges being compared, which is an unfair comparison. So first what I'd like to do is just draw these distributions and plot the scores of these two students. So um, Professor A's class, the mean was 70. One standard deviation unit is equal to 10 points. Um, and we would know that that would place us at a score of 80. Okay, and um, let's just convert Mary's score into a z-score using our equation. I'm sure you can probably already see this. But nonetheless, let's go through the steps. So z is equal to x minus mu divided by standard deviation. So Mary's z-score, again, if we convert this, we know the mean is equal to 0. So Mary's score of 80 minus the mean of 70 divided by standard deviation of 10. So 10 over 10 gives us 1. So her standard deviation difference from the mean is one point. So she's one standard deviation unit above the average or away from the average. Now let's look at the distribution for Professor B's class, which is a little more consistent. And the mean is 65. And Esther's score is 75. So one standard deviation is equal to five points. So that puts us at 70. And then we want to know what um, 
Esther's score is in terms of standard deviation units. So again, 65 would become 0, 70 would be 1, and let's convert her score into a z-score. So z is equal to x minus mu divided by standard deviation. z is equal to 75 minus 65 divided by 5. So that's 10 over 5, and that gives us 2. So we would place Esther's score here and recognize that she's two standard deviation units away from the mean when we standardize both distributions. So what we've done is taken essentially apples and oranges and placed them on one common distribution, the z distribution, where the mean is equal to zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. And now we can plot both of their z-scores on one common distribution and we would see that Mary is here. This is Mary. And Esther is two standard deviation units away. And now we would correctly identify Esther as having done better when we're taking two different distributions, placing them on a third distribution, a z distribution, and then comparing the difference from the center of the z distribution, which is represented by a score of zero. So hopefully this helps you better understand this process and the purpose of z-scores, taking things that are not similar and placing them on one distribution, one common distribution, so we can make fair comparisons. And we'll end with this idea of a, an additional standardized distribution. So z-score is technically a standard um, distribution. Again, it's the common um, distribution that we use to make comparisons. But we can also use z-scores to construct a standardized distribution with a predetermined mean and a predetermined standard deviation. So it's a multi-step process of computing this um, third distribution. So this is regularly used with standardized tests such as SATs and IQ tests because we know that we have multiple versions of something like an IQ test and we over the years have changed the SAT um, assessment so we have to standardize it so that it, the comparison over the years and over the changes is equal, is equivalent. So standardizing distribution has two steps. The original scores are transformed into z-scores and then those z-scores are then converted to a new x value uh, with a predetermined mean and a standard deviation. So we're first going to convert scores into z-scores using our equation. And then we're going to convert them into an x value, a new x value. And our equation is x is equal to the mu plus the product of standard deviation multiplied by the z value. So here's an example using um, some original scores. So the original distribution has a mean of 57 with the standard deviation equal to 14. We're, the second line represents the z distribution. So we know that the mean is equal to 0 and standard deviation is equal to 1. So let's consider this raw score of 43. We're going to convert it to z-score. So our equation again is x minus mu divided by standard deviation. z is equal to 43. In our calculators, 43 minus 57 divided by the standard deviation of 14. So 43 minus 57 is 14. 14 divided by 14, um, and excuse me, um, negative 14. Negative 14 divided by 14 is negative 1. So that's why we see the score of negative 1, a z score of negative 1, right underneath the score, of original score of 43. And then what we want to do is create a third distribution, a standardized distribution, this distribution of x value. So we're going to create a brand new x value, and we're going to predetermine the mean of this new distribution as um, to equal 50 and a standard deviation equal to 10. With IQ scores, normally the mean is always set at 100 with a standard deviation of, I believe, 15 and we keep that consistent so we can take all versions of IQ scores and standardize them with this predetermined mean and predetermined standard deviation. So we want to create this new x value. So it's mu plus a standard deviation multiplied by z. So x is equal to the mu is predetermined 50 plus the standard deviation um, which is 
identified and predetermined to equal 10 and then multiply by this z of negative 1. So 10 times negative 1 would be negative 10 added to 50 and that gives us a new raw score of 40. So again we took an original score, converted it to a z score and then created a new distribution of x values using a predetermined mean and a predetermined standard deviation. And we'll end with a learning check um, to affirm our ability to convert a raw score into a z-score and then finally into a new x value um, from a standardized distribution. So original score of 59 comes from a distribution with a mu of 63 and a standard deviation equal to 8. So let's just draw this out. We have original distribution mean of 63. A score of 59 is less than, so it'll be to the left. So we'll just place a score here of 59. And um, the original standard deviation is equal to 8 points. And we're going to um, convert it. Um, so this distribution is standardized to a new distribution with the mean of 50 and standard deviation equal to 10. What is the new value of the original score? So this is the original x distribution. We're going to convert scores into a z distribution and then to new x values. So we first convert the score, the raw score, into z score. So x minus mu divided by standard deviation. z is equal to 59 minus 63 divided by standard deviation of 8. So 59 minus 63 is negative 4 divided by 8 and that gives us negative point point 0.5 so this score is now equivalent to half a standard deviation unit below the mean the mean becomes 0 and the standard deviation equal to 1 and now we're going to create a new x value um, because we are indicating that the new distribution has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation equal to 10. So we're going to solve for x. x is equal to mu plus standard deviation multiplied by z. So x is equal to, now we're using the new mean of 50 plus the new standard deviation 10 multiplied by this z score of negative 0.5. Okay, and um, in our calculators, 10 multiplied by negative 0.5 gives us um, negative 5, so added to 50, and that gives us a score of 45. So the new score would equal 45. And again, we took the original distribution, converted it into a z distribution, and then a, a, a new distribution with a predetermined mean of 50 and standard deviation equal to 10. So notice the steps that you have to follow to create a new standardized distribution with a predetermined mean and predetermined standard deviation. And that concludes this um, lecture video. I'll continue um, with the last video um, discussing z-scores that are applicable to samples and give us um, a sense of how this all relates to inferential statistics.